Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the new Battalion Cruiser Plus. This board features Battalion's high camber with 3BT and sidekick technology. So high camber is just traditional camber from contact point to contact point. You have the arc of that. That's gonna give you all the pop, load, snap, and drive out of this board. Now, with the 3BT in this, it is directional 3BT. It is more defined in the nose, which means more aggressive beveling out at the tip contact point, less aggressive on the tail. So it's just a little bit more mellow. And then the sidekick kind of just helps scoop that nose out. So that way when you're cutting through crust or just groomers or whatever, it funnels it out a little bit easier to the side. This board is available in 151, 154, 156, 159, 161, and 164. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a sunny bluebird day with average temps, a little bit of wind up high. There is some light dust on top of the perfect corduroy and even a little chop and chunder for good measure. And I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. What you get is a fully directional flex, softer nose, progressively stiffening up to the tail. And there are two key defined flex points. One, halfway back between the tip and the front insert pack. That's right where it starts to stiffen up. And another one right in between the insert packs. You're gonna notice those two key defined flex points, especially when it comes to stability, you do get flap in this nose. This board is like, hello, what's going on? I'm gonna wave at you. And then right where it hits that flex point, it starts to stiffen up and it gets a little more stable. Then the midsection back through the tail is really the most stable section. You notice from that middle flex point back through the tail that it really stiffens up and gets more stable. That's to be expected because this board is very back foot dominant. For having an overabundance of traditional camber, it's really not the snappiest board. Now, if you aggressively load it up, roll back on the tail, you're gonna get some spring, but it's not mind blowing. You're just like, oh, okay, I can launch this side hit or ollie over this fallen skier that's in front of me, but you're not like, ah, oh, I gotta go send everything in front of me. You're more like, well, got the job done. Yeah, them changing factories really changed this board. So first off, it doesn't really engage off the front foot at all. It's kind of guided but pretty much it disengages that front foot and it engages middle of the board back through the tail. So this is a very back foot dominant board. You're gonna get a leg workout carving this thing. At slow speeds, it's very sluggish edge to edge. You notice that it doesn't have that nimbleness that other 3BT boards have. It just sorta ugh, gets on edge and then it transitions back and it's like, ugh, we're back on there. It's, it's lumbering, if you will. Now, when you're really trying to drive it, you're doing it all from the back foot. So you're kicking that knee into the center and pushing it and you'll get a swoopy carve out of it, but it's not the most aggressive thing out there. It's just sort of like, oh, well, we're on edge. Let's just turn this way and then let's turn back that way. Overall, it's kind of uninspiring as a carving board. One thing that I did notice was the disengagement on the tail felt a little washy at times. Like you'd be up on your edge and you'd be going to disengage and you'd be like, what the hell just happened? And I'll tell you what just happened. This board feels like the 3BT is like a couple generations ago when it was a little uh, catty wumpus at times. Yeah, not the best carver. Who's this board for? The Mellow Resort Carver. So I want everyone to know that this was a pre-production sample. They are gonna stiffen this up. They are aware that these were a little bit softer. Do I think that the flex was the issue with how this board wrote? No, it's side cut camber and the position of the 3BT. In all honesty, like this just doesn't ride like the Carver did. And for anyone that knows me, they know that I praise the Cruiser and the Carver line. Those boards could actually turn. This, I don't know what the hell happened to this thing. I'm just like, Ugh. It's so uninspiring. I'm like, this is not what this board was like. Like this went from being one of the boards that I used to like getting on to just go rip turns because it was different. That 3BT shaping in there, just the engagement, everything was so different. So now I'm like, huh, the hell did you guys do to this thing? Overall, like it'll get the job done, but it just feels so much more mellow than what it used to be and you get such a back leg workout. You feel like you've been riding POW for five days straight, open to close, 
and you're only an hour in on riding it. Comparable boards, the Karua Pencil Plus, the Ride Peace Seeker, the Jones Free Carver 9000. Binding recommendations, the Battalion Astro Full Wrap, the Union Atlas Pro, the Nitro Phantom Plus. This has been my review of the Battalion Cruiser Plus. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you going to buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, David Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Mm -hmm.